to take you deeper than the challenges that are in your life so you understand exactly why Jesus is in you and why you are in Christ welcome to a dynamic and life transforming program impacting generations with the word of God Christ has been made our wisdom his Christ the wisdom and the power of God He's not just the power without the wisdom and it cannot be complete to be wisdom without the power because the wisdom of God evokes the power of God on your life. Here is the narrow make manifest with Apostle Grace Lubeck. I'm excited for what God is going to do. I'm excited for what God is going to say to us this evening, uh, this day. For those of you, I know we're in different time zones. For some, it's late night. For some, it's evening. For some, it's afternoon. But wherever you're tuning in across the world, I'm excited for what God is, is, uh, wants to share with us today. And our reading shall be from Psalms 34. Uh, Psalms 34, we're going to begin from the first verse. The Bible says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise, and I'm reading the Amplified Version, shall continually be in my mouth. My life makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble and afflicted hear and be glad. Verse 3 says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought, the Bible says, inquired of the Lord, and required him of necessity and on the authority of his word, and he had me and delivered me from all fears. They looked to him, those who believed, and were radiant. And their faces shall never blush uh, for shame or be confused. Glory to God. Today I want to talk about a very interesting mind that, that, that has come across lately in my uh, personal fellowship with the Lord recently. He's uh, been impressing it on my heart to share so much on the reason why uh, we have people who perpetually live a life of fear, okay? Sometimes there are people watching me right now, or some of you are watching me right now, and you've probably woken up in a state of a circumstance or an experience that threw you off guard and, 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 and distracted you off the course of faith and you know, threw you into a very crazy mode of despondency and, 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 and all hope was lost. Uh, maybe I've, 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 I've been around people in my years of counseling where some people have received the worst news uh, from doctors, some have received the worst news from uh, their spouses, some have received uh, the worst news from their parents and some from their own children and some have received very bad news uh, at their workplaces and there's many, many forms of things that can come our way and sometimes we, they hit so hard, they hit so hard, you know, they hit so hard. And when everything is going on straight and, and, and not proper and direct, you, you might never understand it until something hits you so bad that it will throw you off balance and the fear that would grip your soul would almost you 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 even some people even fail to feel their own feet uh, when they are in, in in that kind of state and so we've had experiences in life and uh, i've seen believers who are so shaken and shuddered and and sometimes when the spirit of god is ministering uh, to us we, we, we tend to take certain things as simple and, and, and straightforward as they appear. And, and it's one of, one of those days I was, you know, relating with the Spirit. And, and, and he said, but why? Why are people afraid? Of course, I gave my answers, which I knew were aligned to the Word of God, and I was right. But he said, but I ask because I want to also show you another side of why people live in fear, you know. And, and, and the Lord told me, when you find a Christian, when you find a believer who is living in, a, in perpetual fear, in constant worry, in constant anxiety, in, in a restlessness and an insecurity and uh, uh, an anticipation of wrong happening or, 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 or hitting shipwreck in, in, in a certain form of way, the Lord told me that is a Christian who has not exercised themselves to seek me the way they have to seek me as simple as that sounded when i went so deep into searching out what the lord meant 
he began to break these things down for me slowly by slowly and of some of which I'm going to share in this sermon tonight to help us understand that when you learn to seek God a certain way, fear will leave. Fear will leave. And so when you are, if you find yourself in a place where, and, and sometimes it's, it's not that some are perpetual, and some just wake up and you are okay, you are walking your life of faith right, you are, you are living this life of salvation, you know, in, in the right course, but something happens and, and it, it could throw you off, it could simply throw you off. But if that should continue one day, two, three, four days, that is only proof, more so when you still feel insecure and unsettled and anxious and afraid in your spirit it means that you have not learned how to seek God or you have not sought God as you ought and that is what Psalms 34 is trying to tell us if you read again from the fourth verse right he says I sought and inquired of the Lord and required him of necessity and on the authority of his word and he had me I sought the Lord and he had me and delivered me from all my fears delivered me from all my fears underline the word all my fears all my fears all your fears God's mind is not to deliver you from one and then leave you in another or deliver you from the easy and more uh, tolerable and then let you, you know, slip down into uh, a more destructive one. No, God intends for you to be delivered from all fear. That if anything comes ahead, no matter what lies ahead of your life, there is a way you will learn and, 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 and align yourself to, 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 to God's word and will and purposes enough that you will find that in the most threatening experiences, you'll be strong you'll be strong and I believe that some of you believers watching me right now you've been through something and some of you are still going through some issues but you are have you ever been at a point where you are so amazed at how strong in the inside you are and how you know fortified uh, and, and garrison you are in in your spirit and, and I want to explain why it is so but I also want to establish somebody into a life of constant strength in your spirit when paul is praying for the church in colossians he says i pray that you might be strengthened in your inner man through the holy spirit god wants the place he wants your inner man to be at a certain strength at a certain you know uh, establishment at a certain you know fortification he wants that man to be strong your inner man to be strengthened you know that nothing shakes him that regardless of whatever happens outside your life you, you have a strength within your inner man some people have an outward look of confidence they have an outward look of, of we, 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 we got this you know I got this but inside they're shaken they're broken they're torn people they are they're they're they're, they're wasted within with fear and, and and every other moment they leave you know to the next day and the next day and the next month anticipating some bad or ready to react to something bad as those who have not understood God. But I love that he says that when I sought the Lord, and the KJV said, I sought the Lord and he had me and delivered me from all my fears. No man who seeks God fears. Or if you learn to seek God a certain way, you will learn not to fear. 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 It is something that the Spirit of God, it takes the Spirit of God to instruct a man in, into the boldness of the Spirit. Okay? And, and tonight I want to go so deep into this so some of us, there's something I want to connect you with. There's a common scripture, of course, we are reading 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 7. It's a very common scripture for those of you who, are, who, who have been in the faith for quite some time. And it says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, he says, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That God has not given it to us. But you see, I was studying that scripture and I went into the Greek translation to study these words because there's something the spirit of the Lord was throwing me into. In, 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 in my questions with God. And I, and I see that when you read the word given, okay, for the Lord has not given, for God has not given, huh? the Greek word there is didomi, 
didomi. He has not given. And what does it mean? He has not ministered fear to us. He has not yielded us to fear. He has not committed us to fear. He has not committed you to fear. He's not, he has not yielded you to fear. He has not ministered fear to you. The Lord has not ministered fear to you. But he has ministered power. He has ministered love. And he has ministered a sound mind. Let me show you how deep this is. Sometimes as the ministers of the gospel, the Bible has been very clear in the instruction we have before God as ministers. It says, brethren, for those of us who desire to be ministers or masters, we should, we should take a deeper heed because greater judgment awaits us. All right? We desire many of us to be ministers of the gospel but the bible speaks of people who desire to be teachers you know this message of the law knowing not knowing what they're saying the bible says and not neither knowing from whence they are found these things some people don't know what they're saying when they're ministering the gospel and unfortunately some believers again in that place of ministry do not even carry the affirmation from where they preach and minister these things if god said i have not given you the spirit of fear i have not ministered ministered fear to you, but I've ministered power, love, and a sound mind. Get this. No minister of the gospel should minister to people in fear. Because God has not ministered to us in fear. Some of us think, or some ministers think, that when you scare people into obedience, when you scare people into into you know, aligning themselves to do what is right, whether more, either more morally or spiritually, or you know, I've 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 seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen sometimes when uh, ministers can get to a place where we scare people and minister fear to their spirits, so we can cause them to either obey, or we can cause them to walk in line with what we think we we uh, ascribe to as a way of helping men walk in the righteousness with which God has given them, but. Does that now surprise us why the body of Christ is asking questions around where is the power that is supposed to be imminent in the church of Jesus Christ? Are we now surprised why we don't see a certain glory? Maybe, just maybe, we need to get back to understanding exactly how did God minister? And I hope one of these days I will have the opportunity to teach about the present ministry of Jesus Christ. The present ministry of Jesus Christ. Because we have to first understand him from the spiritual, the rock from which they drank, that light. He existed. The spirit of Christ was in supply even before he came in the flesh. But when he comes in the flesh and is dead and is raised from the glory, uh, raised, raised to glory, that dispensation is changed we enter another page and and many of us have not embraced the present ministry of jesus christ many new testament creations many new testament believers connect to jesus christ in an old testament dispensation they see him as he walked not as he is and may i add that jesus's life on the earth before he was uh, crucified and raised from the dead all of that synopsis, all of that story, all of that history was all tagged to the Old Testament. Jesus was still under the Old Testament. He was a man under the law because the fullness of that dispensation had not come. It was only equated to the fulfillment after his death and resurrection. Some people don't know that Jesus Christ lived in the Old Testament dispensation, even though he was the son of God and was 100% God. And so there are things that even though in the times of the Christ, we can allude to, we can connect with in the faith as of to connect to the anointing, you know, as of to connect to the way and mind of the spirit. But there are also things we might not be able to connect to because they are of the other dispensation. They are of the old dispensation. They are of, 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 of the other covenant. And for the new covenant creation, it will not, you, you know, be able to, 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 to define you. Because when you become a new creation, in Christ Jesus, all things are past and all things have become new. But unfortunately, some of those things have been shifted from 
the Old Testament dispensation and have come into the New Testament as traditions. And now the word of God is made without effect because of our very own traditions. When the Bible says this is love made perfect, that, as he, uh, that, that we might have confidence on that day, for as he is, so are we in this world. When the Bible says for as we is, that's a definition of a glorified being, Christ, given a name above every name, that at the sound of that name every knee bows. There was an elevation in the name from the time when he was raised from the dead. When he humbled himself as unto the cross, yes, he was Jesus Christ. That's true. But there was an elevation of glory in that name when he humbled himself as unto the cross and died. For the Bible says because of that, he was given a name above every name that at the sound of that name, every knee bows of the things in the earth and the earth and in heaven and every tongue confesses that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. There was an elevation. You must know how the, the present truth Christ ministers, the ministry of Christ in, 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 in present truth. If we understood that reality, many ministers would not minister the things we are ministering or are here ministered on our altars today, and some of which because they are reasonable, right, and can be uh, connected to, you know, usual human uh, experiences, some of these are making sense as truth, and these are the things that are killing our brethren. These are the things that are killing our brethren. One time I had a minister, him who made a statement, and he said, look, um, we, he said, oh, there's a, 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 an experience that we have seen in these days where faith preachers are preaching too much faith that they have not prepared people. They have not prepared people uh, to, to, to survive when calamity befalls them, to survive when hard times come. In my heart, I was like, oh my God, did this man of God hear what he just said so he was judging a faith minister for not preparing men for disaster hello hello can you even think about it that you are I, I get my Bible to open to prepare men for disaster if I teach you a message that is preparing you for disaster what am I directing you into disaster 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 I can teach a message to sustain you in your faith amidst the challenges, but I cannot teach you a message that, 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 that would help you go through, I mean, lose in disaster. Because some of them, I think the mind is, for example, uh, one of them uh, was saying, oh, you know, uh, some people play God. Some people play God, eh? so they think that everything has to go their will. Uh, for example, he gave an example and said, for example, if you've been believing God for healing, and then the healing for one year, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, and then that healing doesn't go away, eh? don't you think that, that, that maybe it's not God's will for you to heal? Oh my God, oh my God. I, I had questions in my heart about this minister for so many years. Until on one of those occasions, this minister made a confession on the same set one day that he had been battling an illness for a very long time, for many years. So I said, ah, okay, this is what happened. Disease, you know, consumed the minister for so many years that it made this minister change his doctrine. It made this great man of God change his doctrine concerning God. And now instead of teaching men the faith of divine healing, we're teaching them the grace that sustains them without healing until they die. Jesus Christ came with a message. Voices can die, but the message stays. He did his ministry for three years as a voice and left the earth, but his message stayed. And in every dispensation, that message is marching on triumphantly to the next dispensation, handed over to worthy and faithful men who teach it to others also. That message is that Christ is the same today, yesterday, and forever. His heart towards humanity has been salvation. He wills that all men be saved and that they might come to the knowledge of the truth. There are many people who are carrying disease in their bodies because they think it is the will of God to be sick. There are many people who are going through sufferings, unnecessary sufferings, because they think it is the will of God. 
they struggle through one year, two years, 20 years, 30 years, and then they say, oh, maybe I need to come to terms to the God who can give me grace to carry my illness until I die. But even though we are teaching that, you, it's not the truth. Oh, but, but why is it that I never got healed? That should be the question. Why is it that the man of God or the woman of God or the believer is not healed? Then we can have a conversation around, is God true? And every man a liar? Does he mean what he says when he says by his stripes you were healed? Does he really mean it? Does he really mean it? When he went about doing good, did he heal all that were oppressed of the devil? Yes, he healed all that were oppressed of the devil. But when things don't work our way, I've seen men who have attacked the demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because some of them tried it and it did not work for them or they've never seen it in their ministry. I've seen Christians, believers who are attacking divine healing because maybe they've never tried it or it has never worked in their ministry. I've seen uh, some who are against the prosperity of God's own because for them the idea of prosperity has been so diluted into a very inexcusable lustful picture in the body of Christ and 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 and, and for some ministers it has gone to the level of robbery and 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 so because of that we are throwing you know everything out of the window and saying no we don't believe that and now we are now working backward as the body of Christ uh, to help us go back to the places where we really lost our faith where some people really began from to slide off the mind of God concerning their lives. The gospel is very clear. If God has said something, it is true. Regardless of whether it has worked for you or it has not worked for you, it still abides true. It's not wrong and neither does it have variance because it has not worked in your life. No. Never submit your personal experiences to the integrity of God's message. It, that is deeper than that. It is deeper than that. And so I see many people who have seen believers who have accepted, you know, certain things and come to terms with certain things. But what has he said? I have not given you a spirit that has ministered fear. The ministry of the spirit I've given you is of love, power, and sound mind. Love power and sound mind that means when we're talking about the ministry of the person of the holy spirit or the spirit of, the, of christ that is, is is released in the earth it is a spirit that seeks to prove the love of god on all fronts it is the spirit that seeks to demonstrate the power of god on all fronts and it is a spirit that seeks to establish the believer in sound mind on all fronts that is it nothing less the kingdom, he said, is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. He says that is the kingdom. That is the realm. So when God says, I have not uh, domed you, I have not committed you to fear, I have not yielded you to fear. When you see yourself afraid, when you see yourself walking in the direction of fear, I want you to know that God has not pushed you there. There is something that is pushing you into the direction of fear. And that's the thing you need to study as a believer. You need to sense in your spirit when fear comes. You can sense the spirit of fear in, in how you confess, in the words you say. In, in the way you react and respond to things that are around you, your home, your family, your business, your ministry, you, you can tell. And when you, re, you feel it, that, that something is yielding, Satan is yielding you to fear, you have to know when to stand your ground and declare and say, look, devil, I know that you're inclining me to a spirit of fear, but that is not what I was given. That is not what was committed to me. That is not what was my ministry, God's ministry toward me. And even as, as, as a minister, as Fanero Ministries, we cannot teach fear. We cannot be ministers of fear. The church of Jesus Christ cannot be a minister of fear. In this spirit of COVID, I've seen ministers of fear. I've seen ministers, oh, be careful of this, be careful of that, hey, this is going to happen, oh, be careful of that, oh, this is this, oh, it's now saying, this is the end time. Listen, even in Thessalonians, the scriptures, is, the scriptures are clear. If we, who, who of us as believers is not anticipating the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? 
Who of us is not looking with joy and anticipation for the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? John the Revelator says, come quickly, Lord Jesus. We all look upwardly with expectation, joyful expectation of the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In fact, he tells us that even when you see these things take place, he said, do not lose heart, nor your peace. He says, do not lose heart, nor your peace. When you hear plagues, he said, do not lose your heart or peace. When you hear pestilences, when you hear wars and rumors of war, he says, do not lose your peace. Don't lose it. Don't lose it. Because we are not ministers of fear. The church of Jesus Christ is not a ministry of fear. It's a ministry that confirms and affirms to the spirits of men just how much God loves them. It is a ministry that confirms to men just how much power is abiding in the believer through Christ. The, uh, the, uh, the, the, the surpassing greatness of power, immeasurable power that is at work within the believer. It ministers the soundness of mind. The soundness of mind. If you are a minister and you align yourself that way, your ministry cannot fail. Your ministry cannot fail because you are aligned to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But here is, this is, I'll tell you why the, the church many times finds itself swinging between, you know, the, the, the ministry, uh, you know, the flesh and the ministry of the spirit. Why sometimes we find ourselves ministering from a realm of darkness and sometimes functioning in the realm of, of, of light. Many of us have not been awakened and, and have not clearly understood uh, the things touching our nature as a new creation. Firstly, let, let, me, let me first pass this as a reality for some of you to, 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 to put this, to note this, if you will. It's a divine principle of the Godhead not to bestow a gift to anyone or anything that is contrary to the definitive nature of that thing. I'll say it again. It's a principle of the Godhead not to bestow a gift, right? Not to bestow a gift to anything or anyone if this gift is contrary to the definitive nature of that thing or that person. He cannot give a man beyond what that man is able to bear. It's not in the nature of God. It's not in the nature of God. That is why he did not give the fallen man the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The Old Testament dispensation is clear. The Spirit of the Lord used to come upon the prophets of old. Right? But we don't see the baptism, the infill, and, and the baptismal of the Holy Spirit. We don't see that. Why don't we see it? Because that nature could not contain the Spirit within. There, there was a necessity that, that man would be changed. And once that change takes place, then the nature, the new nature, can embrace the, 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 the spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit. But you see, the challenge, the challenge with, with many uh, believers is because our eye has been attuned to darkness and the way of darkness. And because we've been attuned to the way of darkness, even when through love God is seeking redemption, because we design not the judgments of the spirit, we find ourselves inclining back into darkness and because of that many are destroyed because we don't understand the judgments of god i'll give an example of jonah when god sends jonah to nineveh all right he tells them nineveh shall be destroyed you know nineveh shall be destroyed okay you go tell them that nineveh is going to be destroyed nineveh is going to be overturned right it's going to be overturned it shall be no more and then the prophet prophesies that. But if you study, interestingly, the word there for, you know, overturned or judged, the, the, the literal word, the literal uh, Greek word there is actually transformed or changed. So you can actually see the grace of God in the mind he had toward Nineveh, that his mind through the prophet was not to destroy, it was to save. But because the same word used there for overturned or destroyed 
for many people, they, they think it in the realm and understanding of darkness. But as we see through the working of God, we see that this is what brings Nineveh to salvation, and indeed they are changed and turned. They are transformed. Glory to God. Glory to God. I don't know whether somebody caught it. And you see, Jonah had a glimpse of God's mind. That's why he says, no, 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 I know you. If I go and prophesy to them that they are going to be destroyed, you'll have mercy on them. I know how you think. I know, God, how you function. And because of that, my prophecies will not be fulfilled. Because to Jonah, it's more important for his prophecies to be fulfilled than the mercy of God to go over the lives of fallen men. Even the animals, God had mercy on them. He said, they know not their way. Even their animals. He, he had pain even for the death of their, 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 their tamed animals. You see that? So if, if you can see that the mercy of God was there, it, it is why the Bible says that the spirit of, of, of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus Christ. There cannot be a place where the God is releasing a prophetic word and in the end he's not seeking for the redemption of mankind. Man might refuse that redemption, but God's redemptive hand was always available, even in the time he wanted to judge the world most. He comes to the man and tells him, look, Abraham, I want to, dis uh, I I want to destroy these people. He says, but what if they're 20? What if you, see, you see a man dealing with God and, 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 and haggling with God and, and bargaining with God to a place where if there's one righteous man in the city, I shall preserve that city because of the righteousness of that one man. That one man. God's mercy, God's love, for mankind he wills that no man perish it's the same thing that the very prophetic word through jonah that nineveh shall be overturned could also be translated that nineveh shall be changed and transformed because when you read that hebrew translation for that word it does not necessarily denote destruction it doesn't necessarily mean destruction it doesn't necessarily allude to de de decimation. No, there was a mind of God in this. And, and it takes a special grace of the spirit to see that when God is speaking through his prophet that actually Nineveh shall be changed. Yes, the word sounds like judgment, but that's the judgment that is going to bring them to repentance and to the end of God's intention for them that indeed they were changed and transformed into better and God's judge destruction did not overtake them because he wills that they be saved. But like I said, God cannot give anything or, or anyone a gift that is contrary to his nature or its nature. It's not in the principles of God. It's not in the principles of God. So to, to even explain fear, we must understand from which nature we're at. I'll give you an example. In Psalm 62, sorry, uh, uh, 64 verses 1, the psalmist makes a prayer. All right, the psalmist makes a prayer and he says, Hear my voice, O God, in my prayer. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. From fear of the enemy. Preserve my life from the fear of the enemy. Now, if the psalmist makes that prayer, he's a hundred percent right to pray that he might be preserved from the fear of his enemies. I'll tell you why. Because one, this David, even though he's a man after God's own heart, he's not a new creation. He's not born again. Christ is not yet come in the flesh to become the propitiation of the sin, as of to translate man from darkness to light, from a fallen nature to a new nature in Christ. That was a fallen nature that was already judged from the onset of the fall of Adam and Eve. That fallen nature is aligned to fear. It is tuned to fear. It is connected to fear. It is configured to fear. Its settings are in fear mode. So when David prays and says, preserve me from the fear, preserve my life from the fear of my enemies, preserve me so I, that I might not fear or that my life from the fear of, 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 of the enemy, he's right to pray because it was in that nature, it is in the nature of the fallen man to actually fear his enemies, to fear what is coming ahead of them. It's in his nature. So he's right to pray. A new creation uh, uh, Christian, a, a regenerated Christian, a born again believer, a New Testament believer cannot make that prayer 
Because you've not been given fear. So you cannot say, preserve my life from the fear of my enemies. No, you cannot. You cannot. You can't pray that prayer. Why? Because he has not given you. Remember when he says, uh, and I'll probably give, give this a bit deeper, when he goes in Romans 8.15, uh, for those who have the amplified version, he says, for the spirit which you have now, now he's talking about the new creation, born again, when you become born again. He says, the spirit which you have now received is not a spirit of slavery to put you more in bondage to fear. Meaning, before you received this spirit, you were actually enslaved into the bondage of fear. You were enslaved. So, you, if you were, if a man is in, in not yet a new creation, is not yet born again, that man would pray to be preserved from the fear of his enemies. But a new creation person, a new creation uh, believer cannot pray to be preserved from the fear of his enemies because the spirit you have received, the Bible says, is not a spirit of slavery to bondage once again to fear. He says, but you have received the spirit of adoption. That's the spirit that is working in every new creation believer. He says that's producing sonship and in the bliss, not in the fear. In the bliss, not in the worry. In the bliss, not in the... In, and, and of course, because in the KGV, there's no, the word bliss is not put there. But I love that this is emphasized in the Amplified and the, in, the, in the Greek as well. That, that, that God says, because you have the spirit of adoption and sonship, in the bliss you cry, Abba, Father. So our cry is not a cry of agony. Our cry is not a cry of anxiety. Our cry is not a cry of fear. No, our cry is a cry of gratitude. Oh, Abba, thank you. Our cry is a cry of gratefulness. Our cry is a cry of victory. Our cry is a cry of triumph. Our cry is a cry of love. Our cry is a cry of breakthrough. Our cry is the cry of an overcomer. That is how we cry. We don't say, oh God. No, we say, oh God. With that joy, with that satisfaction. Oh God. No, 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 listen. If you don't understand this, you're in trouble, big trouble, because the Bible says fear hath torment. Fear attracts the spirit of torment. That means you will be tormented by the devil all their life, all your life. In John he says, for there is no fear in love, for perfect love casteth out all fear, because fear hath torment. So when you hear people saying, oh, that child has been tormented by devils. That brother has been tormented by a spirit. That sister has been tormented by this spirit of sickness. That spirit of bondage. That spirit of this. That sp whatever spirit it is, if it is tormenting you, I want you to understand that behind that is, a, is an ounce of fear in your spirit. There is a grain of fear in there. When you deal with that fear, Perfect love casteth out of fear. It's not the ministry of anybody, but the person of love to cast out fear. When love fills you, fear leaves you. Fear leaves you. But he has said that I sought the Lord and he delivered me from all fear. If you know how to connect to God, if you know how to connect to his spirit, if you know how to connect to his person, fear will flee. And when fear flees, torment flees. I tell people, fear, the flee of fear, will always precede the, 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 the fleeing of torment. Torment will flee where fear is not. Torment cannot stay. Disease cannot stay where fear is not. Bondage cannot stay where fear is not. I don't care whether the doctors have called it any name. If it's not in your mind to accept and be afraid of it, there is a glory that is available for you to deal with even the most complicated thing human history has recorded. Don't think that all the people that are dying of virus right now in the world are dying simply because their bodies are so weak. Some and many of them are actually dying because in midst the sickness, there is fear. There is a lot of fear. There is a lot of fear. There are people, until they're diagnosed of a disease, even with as much pain, they can leave and then it even clears out of their body. But the day they are diagnosed is the day they start to die. Is the day they start to die. 
Why? Because the seed of death has been planted in their spirits by a diagnosis. Diagnosis. Yet they have a pignosis. They have the, have the gnosis of God. They have the knowledge of God. God has given an answer to every challenge in the world. And, and I, I, I know why it's so hard for, for people, for the world to receive this. It is just so good. It's just so good. It's just so good. That's why it's hard for newspapers to report crusades. It's just so good news. It's hard for newspapers to, to report healing meetings, even when many do them across the world. Why? It is just 